Hey YouTube, it's Chris, K2CJB with K2CJB Radio. Welcome back to the channel. It's good to see you again. This video is to walk you through a project I just recently completed, which was to put together a pack, a VHF, UHF pack that I could take with me when we take my wife's car on a trip. There's no radio installed in her car. And recently we took this uh, vacation where we drove from Connecticut down to Pennsylvania to visit some family from Pennsylvania up to Cooperstown, New York to go to the Baseball Hall of Fame and then Cooperstown back home into Connecticut. Probably about close to 500 miles worth of driving. The time we were in Cooperstown, it snowed. It was a late spring snowstorm. I was not happy. But all during that time, it dawned on me that here I am a ham radio operator with no radios with me at all. Uh, no means to communicate with anyone. So I looked around on YouTube like most of us do. And of course I came across Jason KM4ACK. I've subscribed to him uh, quite some time ago. He had put together a VHF UHF pack that he takes with him under the exact same circumstances. You know, if you're in your wife's car, you're in a car with no radio and you want to have radios with you. We're ham operators. We should always have radios with us. So looking around on some other channels on YouTube and uh, putting some ideas together between Jason's uh, pack that he put together. There's another pack that Tech Prepper had put one together that's really cool to look at and check out. In fact, I, I took some of his advice on some of the, the pieces that he has in his kit. And also KS6DAY, he's got a really, really good pack um, that he takes with him whenever he travels. Before we start looking to see what's in the kit, understand that this is not meant to be an emergency communications go bag. That's not the intent of this project. This is a project to just have a couple of radios with you in a lightweight pack so you can communicate if necessary. It is not meant to be an emergency communications pack at all. So here's the pack I put together. This is using some things I already had, and it's also using some things that I picked up to finish this project. So let's take a look and see what's inside. So here's the pack. Let's take a walk through it and see what the pieces are. First, the bag itself is from LA Police Gear. They're, they're not affiliated with the LA Police Department. I got this, this bag some time ago. It's um, molly webbing on both sides, and um, it's a very durable bag that I know will stand up to uh, a pretty good beating. So anyway, I've had this already. It's a small admin case from LA Police Gear. Works great. On the outside, two radios. Uh, one is the Yezu FT70DR. This has uh, got Fusion in it. And of course, you can program it for analog repeaters. The antenna I have on it, rather than use the factory rubber duck, which we all know are basically nothing more than a dummy load. This is from Smiley Antennas. It's uh, a nice uh, extendable whip. And uh, inside the pack, I have a chart that tells you like how many sections to extend and how many to collapse for the different bands, whether it's two meters or 440. This radio has served me well. Um, I haven't used it all that much, uh, but I have used it. There is a battery life issue. We all know about that. If you leave this radio off the charger and just leave it sitting idle like this for some time, the battery will die, no question. Um, but to get around some of the battery life issues, you'll see uh, some of the solutions I come up with that I put inside the kit. Anyway, in this pouch on this side, FT70DR. On this side, a TYT TH350. Fantastic HT. It's tri-band, so it's 2 meter, 220, and 440. I bought this from Let's Get Ready. It's a uh, small uh, radio outfit out in California. Uh, eBay store, that's how I got it. This radio comes with two antennas a 220 antenna, and then also a two meter 440 antenna. However, when you order it from Let's Get Ready, Bob will include this tri-band antenna, two meters, 220, 440, so you're not changing antennas in the field all the time. Great radio, I've had great luck with it. I can't say enough good things about it. Let's talk about these pouches. I got these from KS6DAY. Uh, he runs a company called Spectre, and they make all sorts of gear, including HT pouches. They're custom made for whatever HT model that you have. So this is obviously made for the FT70. This is made for a different TYT, but has the exact same size characteristics. So it fits beautifully inside this pouch. He will tell you to remove the belt clips for a better fit. Although I found you can leave them on. They, they, they just, they fit in there nice and snug. You'll see that this little bungee cord piece fits right over the knobs and then you can Velcro it right on. Works great. Um, very nice pouches for the radios. Now let's take a look inside the pouch. First thing you'll notice, there are two pockets inside the, the, the bag. 
Um, this pocket, I have accessories that correspond to the Yezu, which lives here. And in this pocket are the accessories that correspond to the TYT, which lives over here. So on the Yezu side, first thing we have is the factory rubber duck, just in case, for some reason, the smiley antenna fails. And also the Yezu speaker mic that goes with the HT. On the TYT side, same thing. We have both antennas we carry with us, the 220 and then the 2 meter 440 antenna. And also, like the Baofeng, you can use just about any, any uh, speaker mic that has this sort of plug on it. This is a Kenwood I picked up somewhere, I think at a ham fest. Works fine with the TYT. In the center of the bag, first thing I want to bring up is in this pouch, I carry an N9 TAX Slim Jim roll-up antenna. Great antenna. I have another one of these in my other bag that I carry my FT817 in. Um, so I just got another one for this pack. Comes with a little hook, so if you're in a hotel room and you want to hang it over the, hook it up on the, the curtain rod or whatever it might be, and just extend the antenna, roll the antenna out, it, it's, it's perfect for that. He'll install some coax on it if you'd like. I've got 10 feet on mine. It also has a BNC connector. I think they're a little more durable when, when you're traveling and moving things around, so um, that's the way I have it configured. He'll configure it any way you want. The next thing in the pouch is this really super flexible 2 meter 440 whip. Uh, the tech prepper recommended this. This is from a company called Signal Stuff. And very, very flexible. Now, the way I intend to use this, I could use this on the radios with using the right adapters, which I have with me in here, you'll see later. But also, that same company, Signal Stuff, you can get this small mag mount to go with it, short length of coax cable, BNC connector on it. And if we're operating mobile with the HTs, I can put this out on a roof put this, this flexible whip on it, and I've got myself a mag mount antenna. Um, I haven't tried it at 65 or 70 miles an hour yet, but we'll test it and see how it does. At the bottom of the bag are batteries. Batteries individually wrapped in plastic so they don't short out against each other. For the Azu, I've got three batteries. My feeling is if I have all three of these batteries charged, plus the one on the radio when I leave the house, I should have enough battery power to not have a problem that we all experience with the FT-70. And here, a spare battery for the TYT. The TYT radio, the belt clip travels with the battery. So I bought an extra belt clip to have on the spare battery. So I'm not moving and you know, having to change that around with these tiny little screws. In the front of this bag, there's a mesh pouch that I carry a bunch of accessories in. So again, in no particular order, this is a USB adapter for the Yezu HT. I haven't tried this yet. You can see it's still sealed in this bag. Uh, I wanna try this. We have a couple of USB ports in the car. I wanna see if I can either power it or charge it off of this. Battery eliminator for the TYT. Plug this into the power port in the car, or us old timers call it the cigarette lighter adapter. Put this on the back of the radio. I don't have to use the battery at all. Power port adapter, cigarette lighter adapter for the Yezu. A couple of SMA to BNC adapters to connect to the mag mount antenna or the roll-up Slim Jim. Instruction manuals for the radios, because there are those times when you forget how to program something. And also, this is the chart for how to tune the Smiley metal whip antenna for the FT-70. So that's the whole kit. Again, I can't stress enough, this is not meant to be an emergency communications go bag. It's not what this is at all. This is a lightweight kit that I can carry with me when my wife and I travel in her car, which has no radios installed. I'll leave links in the description below so you can check out some of these items that I've picked up and maybe it's something you can use. So is there anything I left out? I mean, I'm sure there is. I mean, you know, I, I looked at the other guys and what they had and some things I decided not to go with, but there were some things obviously as you saw that I did go with. Um, so how about you? What are you doing with something like this? You know, leave some comments below and it won't hurt my feelings if you say, Chris, you completely messed this part or you, you, you forgot that. I think everything's pretty much covered in, in, in what I've got in this kit. There also might be a trip we go on that might be a little longer. There's plenty of room in that bag. I can take the drop-in chargers with me. I've got them set up in the shack so they're easily removed and I can just throw them right in the bag just before we leave. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. It was informative and you, you were able to, uh, maybe you're kicking around this idea and you're able to get a couple of pointers from what I did here. Um, let me know also in the comments below if, if, if you think it's something you might want to tackle on your own. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Uh, that helps all of us YouTubers. Uh, it does a lot of things for us. First, it kind of encourages us knowing that people like what we're doing. But second of all, uh, it helps the YouTube algorithm, at least so they tell me, to kind of move us up some list somewhere. I don't know what that means. <laughs> 
And also, if you consider subscribing to the channel, make sure you hit the bell. Um, so when you do that, you'll get a, an alert the next time I put a video up and, uh, and you can see what, what I've been doing here in my ham radio adventure. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped you. And um, again, feel free to leave some comments below. Until next time, 73 from K2CJB.